Well, enough of that. Who in their right mind would ever think that Mark would go live at 1.44 a.m., but I did. So this is the uh, crazy <laughs> Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer, going live to talk about, once again, why all of you who are in Canada lamenting the fact that you did not get drawn through draw 176, who have been crying, tantruming, just generally having a big fit. <laughs> there is, as you can probably see, and as everybody can probably guess, there is still hope for you. So another big one just came. Now, it wasn't anywhere near 176, but this latest draw was still pretty big. To see yet another 6,000 come, and I think most of us thought Thursday came, Thursday passed, we didn't see anything, but April the 16th, which is technically two days ago now, 417, which is lower than I thought it was going to get, but every single day, I swear... I swear the government does something just to, to blow my mind. And, and you guys have seen as well, you know, when we, when, we look at, um, when we look at just what happened this week, I just finished recording a video to talk about this one, the new Canadian Pathways to PR. I, I just finished recording a detailed video explaining at least what we know to this stage about this program. Unbelievable, 90,000 spots, and it's even more than that. Because if you are a francophone um, applicant, you're not a part of those caps, those 20, 30, and 40,000 caps that are associated. You know, international students, 40,000 of you. Healthcare workers, 20,000. Essential workers, 30,000 spots. And that may seem like a lot, but there are a lot of temporary workers here in Canada who in one day, one fail swoop by the Minister of Immigration, Marco Mendicino, you now are faced with this amazing reality of 90 essential temporary, 90,000 essential temporary workers and international graduates who have an opportunity. But what I want to talk about today is this round of invitations. And you can see here, you guys, the round of invitations, no one thought that it was going to come, I don't think. I thought it would for sure be on Thursday because that was the pattern, Wednesday, Thursday. I thought it was going to come on the 15th. I thought maybe they'd do 5,000 and it would maybe get down to the 420s. But when they do big, large scoops like this, another 6,000 they did. Right here, you can see 417 is the lowest CRS score. And you have to understand, guys, that 6,000 means that there were some other people at 417 that probably never received an invitation to apply. The cutoff was March the 1st which is, you look at this timing-wise, like one month previously. What is March the 1st? March the 1st is evidence of people who were scrambling. Yes, they were scrambling to get their um, applications in, to write their language test, and then to submit it. So basically, if we're, if we're thinking about what's happening here, it's clear. Immigration is looking for a way to somehow meet those lofty levels plans, to see if there's a way to hit 108,000. But my goodness, I've just put in a call to the AINP program director to see what the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program thinks about this. But wow, it is, it is absolutely in, insane to contemplate that they're supposed to still get 80,000 themselves. I don't know where it's coming from. I'll be honest, I don't. So what does that mean for all you outlanders? who were once again frustrated, disappointed. Well, I still believe with big, massive culls, that's the only way I can describe this, is a big cull by the federal government, many of these candidates were earmarked. They were directed. They were headed towards the only programs that would, would potentially have a spot for them, and that was the provincial nominee programs. And so if the PNPs are decimated, and I talked about this, Right at the beginning, right after we had the big draw on February the 13th, um, or was it the 13th? It's all a blur for me now, I think it was. But when we had that big draw, I said that the PNPs were really going to be hammered because of it, because the candidates that they normally would have drawn were all scooped out with that 27,332 draw. And now we have 90,000 more, 90,000 plus 
that the government is doing everything in their power, they will, to try to fast track people through to get them landed this year. Because remember, they they were behind last year with their levels planning. So to heck with the 401,000 they want to do this year. They were behind last year. They're playing catch up. So there we go. There's all of the ranting that I have. And um, and those of you who are actually watching, it's crazy that people are watching. This is open season. Let's let me talk to you guys. Let me hear what you got to say. I, I want I want to hear what you have to say because at the end of the day, you outlanders, I honestly still think that the PNPs are going to be having to 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 draw people at lower CRS totals. They're going to have to. The OINP is going to have to start picking people that are at a lower threshold. Maybe they're going to dip into the 460s. For you, for those of you who are having birthdays and you're just tearing your hair out because you've, you're losing five points. Like, I feel for you guys. I, I really feel for you guys. But there's still, I believe, going to be hope as the PNPs come to grips with what's just happened. They're going to have to start looking outside to fill their nominations, knowing that you're not going to be landing until next year. And with the, the instructions and the um, just basically what we read in, in the, well, I'll just show you. I'll flip my screen over here and I'll just show you again. If we, if we go back here and we look at this and, and we go to the, the pathways here, you click on here and you'll be able to see there are um, public policies. These are the policies that contain the specific information on this new, these new PR streams. And when you go in here and you read what, the, what, what, the, you know, what immigration is saying, they're, they're describing, they're, they're basically saying that because of um, the, the, the borders being closed, because of the fact that they're, and these are the public policy considerations. This is why they did it. You could see it, it the public policy targets for nationals. Uh, let's see, where do we have what it says here? Um, okay, so if you go here, you can see it says, while applications for permanent residence have been accepted and processed throughout the pandemic, the global travel restrictions and capacity constraints have led to a shortfall in admissions in 2020. And the 401 new admissions announced for this year are key to ensuring Canada has the workers it needs to fill key essential positions and remain competitive in attracting global talent. So that's why they launched this. I'm going to sneeze here. <laughs> that's what happens when you're recording at like just about 2 a.m. in the morning. But I've just been going flat out, you guys. I've been going flat out. I have a ton of things planned. I've got a master class that's planned specifically for individuals that are trying to go through this new PR program. On April the 19th, which is tomorrow, I guess today is technically Sunday, mountain time. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. is when my next express entry do-it-yourself course launches. And I've got a great phenomenal group of people in there. Those of you who are Feb 13ers, you're running out of time now. You're starting to get close. And that course, remember, is full of all those 56 videos as well as a two-week masterclass with yours truly, myself, right here. You guys know who I am. Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer. I lead those live Q&As. And those of you who are in here, we've got, um, as, as I go through here, you can see we've got uh, Abdul here, he took the course. Yes, my friend, hello from the other side. How about this in during the day? So understand, and, and as I go through here, let me just say hello to some of you that are actually watching at this crazy hour. And Kit is in New Delhi, and we've got uh, uh, Vaishnavi who basically says, what happens to the FSW candidates? Well, I've just told you, I think, I think that the PNPs are gonna have to make some moves that could potentially result in more nominations being extended to people outside of Canada that don't have a job offer. Now, we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but I don't want you guys to lose faith just yet. But I do know with how they're rolling these things out, the federal government, there's a very strong indicator that the borders are not opening anytime soon. And they know it. Otherwise, they wouldn't set up this fast track process to land as many people in Canada as possible to meet those levels. So I don't think the borders are opening anytime soon but I don't think hope is lost for all of you guys, okay? <laughs> Billy, thanks so much. He's tagging people. That's awesome. Ralph, what are you doing up, man? It's like 2 a.m. there for you too. Okay, so here, and Kit says the same thing. Outliners who've received your COPER 
uh, as per GCMS and it is expired with meds and kit, you're going to be okay. But I recommend that you consider getting a new medical done and, um, and, uh, and, and police certificates. If the, you know, you've got the message, right? Uh, immigration, the department sent out emails to everybody saying, Hey, we're going to start calling you case by case. Maybe they get this COVID thing figured out. Maybe they get this COVID hotel thing figured out where they can actually make everybody quarantine and they just stay in hotels. They quarantine for the full amount. They, they get the tests done. They get their vaccines and they don't have to keep the border so closed. That's what we're hoping. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice in the afternoon in India. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Sarish, good to see you as well from Australia. What part of Australia are you from? My brother's over in Brisbane. He is an actual Australian citizen with his family. He's a dentist over there. Oh, let's see if I got something here. Yes, I do. Oh, no, I don't. Let me just turn up the sound effects. Here we go. Let me do it right here. There we go, Ablash. That is awesome. I am so happy for you. Ablash, there is time for you to get right over. I keep flipping my screens around here. There is time for you to get right over here. And there's a link in the description below and come and join me in this masterclass. I think Abdul, I think I even have one of your testimonials. Yeah, Abdul says this 347 has a great ROI. And if you think this is too much, count how much you paid a coffee for a month, then see how much a scammy agent asks, and then see whether or not there's value. <laughs> so get over there, head over there and make sure um, that you, um, I'm just flipping all over the place here with all of my screens. Get over here and register for this, okay? Register, join me. The class will be starting in less than a day, and you'll have an opportunity to um, you'll have an opportunity to really, really uh, learn what you need to do to make sure that there's no mistakes with your application. All right. So that is the invitation to you, Abalash, and congratulations. Okay, draws resume. Uh, Pankush, I'll be honest. I don't think the draws under the Federal Skilled Worker Program of Express Entry are going to be happening anytime soon. There's just too many people outside of the country. And uh, until we, we see things opening with the border, I don't think there's going to be any draws. Yes, Ralph, I am always working and I do need to find a balance for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Kawaja, Kawaja says... Points 370, where can I apply for Canadian Immigration? My qualifications is ACCA. Um, if you do not have a connection to Canada right now, my friend, you get your profile in and you hope that your knock code matches something that one of the provinces are looking for. It's really tough to come and study. I assume you're probably a little bit older. That's why your points are at 370. When you're older, you lose points. You're less competitive. And that's just the way of the world, unfortunately. That's the way things are when it comes to a program that's really driven by human capital. The fun part, though, I'll tell you guys, the fun part here is that there is a ton of people now coming through that just have work experience. They may not have good education. They may not have perfect English. And these people are going to be the subject of, an, of many longitudinal, longitudinal studies in Canada um, one of the groups, the Conference Board of Canada, I'm actually speaking at their immigration summit here um, uh, next month. And uh, the, the reality is they're going to be studying, studying this cohort of people, these, these 176, these Feb 13ers, I call them, as well as the people that are going through these programs right now, these new pathways to PR, these new PR streams, these candidates are going to be watched very carefully. Because I've told you guys, I am a farm kid. I am a farm boy. I grew up on a farm. I, I, you know, we grew our, we grew our, our own garden. We raised our own chickens and our cattle and our, you know, our, our ducks and our geese. And we had our own chickens that laid their eggs. Like we were, we were just rural farmers. That's what, that's my background, you guys. And I can tell you, my parents were awesome. My dad had a grade six education. My, my mother had a grade 10. But those, those parents of mine were pillars in our community. They gave their heart and soul to make that community what it was. And even to this day, um, Carmen Gay has so many little things and programs that are uh, that were affected by my parents, and um, and they didn't have the high human capital with a master's degree. So I'm excited to see these people do well, do very very well, to succeed and to prove people that human capital is not all that it's cracked up to be. 
All right, let's see who else we've got here. Vera, hello. Make sure you you, you uh, indicate where you're tuning in from. Okay, let's see who else we got here. Jason Walsh. She says, Walsh. Jason <laughs> Jason Walsh says, Good evening, morning, Mark. I know it's almost impossible to answer, and who really knows the answer? But if you had a guess, will FSWs have a chance to come in 2021? Jason, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Um, if if even the remotest possibility it would happen in the fall, September, October, that's if 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 that was the case. Now remember, Jason, if you've got your COPER, I don't know if you mean you have it already, your confirmation of permanent residence, or whether you're talking about an, another draw uh, that is an open draw for FSW Outlanders. I'm not sure what you mean, but I'll be honest, I'm not holding out much hope anymore, and at least not for 2021. Um, only on case by case basis, and maybe they'll start to open things up to certain countries. I don't think so because they usually go by cohort and not by country. Um, so we'll just have to see. All right, let's see who else. Maxim, yes. Okay, Maxim. I know you had sent me an email, and I forwarded that to Igor to connect. So what about the OINP? Yeah, Human Capital Priority Stream. Will they continue their own path, inviting people according to their internal needs? They always do. All provinces do, Maxim. And what I what I think is going to happen, I think they're going to look to not only IT, because they've been doing those IT draws, right? I think that they probably will look at actual open um, uh, draws. I think there's a possibility that the OIN people will, will do that, <coughs> that are purely based on comprehensive ranking system score. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Shuhel, good to see you. Yes, I understand, my friend. Uh, Vaishnavi says, what about the deserving skilled candidates who are struggling to maintain CRS in the pool? I know, my friend. I know, I hear you. I hear you, I hear you. Um, yes, what about the feeling Abdul says? People who've been trying for three years. Man, what do I feel? I feel sad for you. I feel really, really sad. And I wish things weren't the way they are. I really wish. Like, who would have predicted the pandemic would have created this? And it's so hard because one person's misfortune, that's all of you outlanders, it are, are so many people's good fortune in Canada, especially all of these people like the, the trades and, and the frontline uh, service people. They never, many of them never would have had a pathway to permanent residence. In fact, I've got clients now that I'm having to reach out that I did consults with just recently where they didn't have a shot, they didn't have a chance, and now they do. And so it's so sad because... When one group, when one cohort of people, you amazing outlanders, you are suffering. So many people in Canada are benefiting because of this. And, um, but it doesn't change the fact that, that you know, the government is, is doing what they can to try to meet these lofty levels plans that they've instituted. All right. Oh, Edith. Hello. How are you, Edith? Wish they would allow people in Canada with less than one year experience or people with a job offer for less than a year since I worked gig to gig in film. Oh yeah, Edith, I hear you. I hear you. It's really, really tough because if you're in Canada, you can cobble those things together, right? Gig to gig. But when it comes to um, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, the whole program is built on continuous full-time employment. And I can see here you've got, is that you on a horse there, Edith? I want to expand this and see if I can, I wonder if I can push it back. Ah, uh, there. Okay. Oh, what a cute horse. That is awesome. I love that. Now I've totally screwed up my whole thing here. I don't know if I can fix this. Oh man, I really botched this. <laughs> That's what happens. I don't, I don't know if I can fix this. Let's see. All because I wanted to see your awesome horse there. Oh, maybe I can fix it. It's pretty finicky. Okay, there. We're kind of back to some semblance of normal. But yes, yeah, I, I hear you, Edith. I hear you. Okay, let's see here. Hope for the the FSW candidates. We asked that we answered that one. Um, okay, yep. I, I see where you're going, Vishnavi. Aren't Outlands the actual global talent? Um, well, ultimately, I think everybody, everybody has something that they can give. And that's the the nature of the multicultural fabric of Canada. Our diversity is our strength having people from all walks of life, not just those with super high human capital, but those who have hardworking skill sets that maybe don't have the highest education, 
but they are dedicated and they work hard and they save and they start their own businesses and they do everything that creates jobs for Canadians every bit as much as someone who comes with high human capital. So I think everybody, there's global talent that comes in all different forms, but I know where you're going, Vishnavi, and I feel for you, my friend. Okay, we've got some big questions here, and I think these might be this territory. Um, already applied for Alberta in December. With it, I will complete my one year as office administrator in July with CRS points of 380. So here I'm wondering to know how possible for my profile to get PR. Thanks a lot. Um, if you've gone through the Alberta, um, like you've submitted your application, did they give you a notification of interest? Um, if you've already applied, then you're ahead of the game, my friend. Because so many people don't even have those opportunities. All right. Uh, Subin says, do you think the CRS score will reduce in the next year? Uh, because some of them still don't have one-year experience. It's possible. You know, um, I guess the question becomes CRS score for outlanders or CRS score for inside. We know right now that for inside, those CRS scores have dropped and dropped. But for outside, there's just so many people. Let's go back here and let's just take a look. I'll share my screen again here with you. And uh, let's just take a look at the rounds of invitations. So this is the round. And then all, as, of, um, as of April the 16th, that's when the draw was. This, these totals are on the 12th. So you can see here, 500 to 600, there were 1,500 total candidates. Now, some of these may have been CEC, but you don't get past 600 unless you're a provincial nominee. So then we go down here and we look at the totals. And we can see from 501 to 600, 14, 451 to 500. Well, we want to go down we want to look at the scores. So this is what many people are asking. 461 to 470. This range here, do you see how many people are still here? Just about 20,000. How many is there? From 460 and up, there's like over 20,000. And so I think you can see how competitive it is, even when you're trying to, um, you know, even I got, boy, that's annoying, isn't it for you guys? Sorry. Um, so when it comes to the CRS score, it's possible it just depends on how large these draws are and how aggressive. If, if Canada doesn't get their, their 108 plus thousand, you know, um, economic immigrants and 80,000 PNPs, then it's entirely possible, Subin, that next year they may have to do larger draws and bring more people in because immigrants are the future drivers of our economy. And with our population shrinking, we absolutely have to have um, uh, new people filling the, the workforce to cover for those that are retiring. And, you know, probably 40, 50 years ago, there were seven workers to every one retiree. And before long, we're going to be at the point where if we don't do something about this, we're going to be at the situation where we have two workers supporting one retired person. And that just ain't going to work. <laughs> Thank you, Avalash. I appreciate it. I'm going to go a little bit longer here, but like I said, it's 2.07 a.m. and I am feeling it. Okay. Nina says, what will the new policies look like according to you? Any idea if they will have um, Pro-V for ITA? Uh, Nina, maybe rephrase that one. I'm not quite sure what you meant by that. Any idea if they will have... I think because my brain is slowing down because it's so early in the morning, that's probably why I'm not sharp in thinking what you, what you intended there. Um, okay, I'll have to leave that one. All right. And Nina was a past subscriber to the course as well, Nina. So you have to let them know what you thought of it. Okay. Your predictions. What will be the lowest CRS score this year as most of us losing five points of age? Yeah, I know. I know, Sahel. Um, it's really hard for me to say. I, I don't think personally with the number of people that are in the pool um, and the inability for people to travel that this year it's going to drop below what the lowest score it ever did, which is 468. I don't think it's going to drop below that from last year. Oh, great se great session of DIY course. Thank you, Nina. I'm going to give you one of these ones right here. 
<laughs> That's kind of funny. I didn't see your comment there. I said, Nina, tell them what you thought of the course. <laughs> That's so funny. And then, and then Nina, she gives me a shout out. Thank you so much. You know, it's so hard because the, the whole world is full of DIYers that, that basically, and, and Nina is a, an immigration consultant. And uh, I love it when consultants take my course, you know, anything that I can do to help my fellow comrades in arms. But, uh, but ultimately, you know, and I've had said this so many times, there are so many consultants out there that just shouldn't be practicing. And I don't know how they managed. Well, I know how they managed to get through because they, they basically, the standards for, for qualifying were so low in many instances. And then you have people, good people like Nina here who, who do things right, who make the effort to learn and, and, um, and, and hone their skills um, but yeah, anyways, the course is, I, I love the course. I can't wait till, till Monday comes. It is going to be awesome. I think I've shared this with you guys already. I, I wonder if I can do this window. Let's see how this window looks. That's eh, a little off. It's not too bad, but if you go to, um, if you just go here and you click on this right here, you can go to the, uh, the landing page and click on this video right here. And in this video, you will have the ability to actually see, that's a pretty funky place to stop my face on. There we go. <laughs> um, I actually dive in and show you the inner workings of the course, all 56 lessons and everything. And like I said, this course is starting April 19th and there's still some spots left. So click on register, especially all you Feb 13ers that are at the stage now where the rubber's hitting the road. I cannot believe that there are just about 100 people watching this live. This is insane. Now I'm feeling guilty about shutting it off and going to sleep. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep legging it out. I'm going to see what I can do here. Simi, good to see you. Okay, and uh, Vaishnavi's got a lot of questions here. We'll, we'll leave this. So Vaishnavi, I know it's 475. Um, yeah, PNPs, you don't as a dentist. I understand that. Okay, FSW Outland, nothing happened in my file since October 30th. Hey, my friend, nothing's happened on files. Actually, let me get this one. Uh, Nithin, nothing's happened on files for some people since, since March of last year. So I feel for you. I feel for you. Okay, let's see here. Just have a question. Can a person have two express entry profiles? Well, normally I wouldn't. I, I, I'm not quite sure if I see a reason for having two. Um, unless one, you have an ITA and you think it's going to get refused and you want to get back in the pool to get drawn with another, but normally I, I normally I don't do that, uh, Khalil. Okay, here we go. Nina says, do you think new policies will have options of invitations or direct submission of documents for the process? Direct, Nina. It's going to be direct. Um, you can see from the instructions. The instructions is you decipher them, and I'm attending um, a technical briefing with IRCC on Wednesday around noon, and um, we've already forwarded a number of the questions. It's going to be online. You know, the things like police certificates and medicals are not going to be asked for up front. I just don't think so. When I when I try to read through and I and I read through everything with a fine tooth comb, all of the policies that have been released, I read them carefully. I thought about how they interacted with the way express entry looks and it's going to be online. They're going to, I, you know, the question, Nina, I don't think there's going to be a rep portal. I really don't. And that's part of the reason why I'm creating this um, another Course, and you're welcome to join it, Nina. Another masterclass specifically on this program. And I'm going to pull in every resource I can get my hands on, everything from questions to government to um, just collaborating with my colleagues to understanding just basically the inner workings of how immigration works. And, you know, having worked as an officer, you have a little bit of an ability to think, you know, like they do. And I've, I've had so many meetings with immigration uh, over this last while as the national chair of the Canadian Bar Association, that you start to see where they're going. And I've had lots of in-camera meetings that I can't really talk about. But I think personally, when I look at it, the biggest issue right now, Nina, is for these people is, is the language tests. They're just all booked up. And I heard some crazy stuff about people going in and swooping up and booking consult spaces and then trying to, to sell them like third party. Like how lame. I, I have no respect for people that are exploiting the misfortune of others. Wow. That's like hoarding food in a, you know, when people are starving and then, and then charging more, right? It's like the early days of the pandemic when some businesses were like charging exorbitant rates for hand sanitizers and they got shamed. 
That's how I feel about people who are booking multiple spots and then trying to sell them to people. So awful, so awful. Anyway, so um, in terms of the, the, you know, what that program is going to look like, watch Nina, join me on the live on Wednesday. I'm probably going to do some other videos in the interim. Like I've got a pretty good idea already what documents they're going to be asking for just by, you know, basically the eligibility requirements. Like there's going to be reference letters needed. Educational credential assessments are not going to be needed. Just proof of Canadian education. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things. I made a list as I went through. Let's see what else do I think is going to be on there. Passports, reference letters, T4s, pay slips, um, cell PIP, obviously IELTS or TEF, uh, TCF, those language test results. I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to see a work permit that was valid. Uh, and then proof of physical presence in Canada, like that you're actually living here. <clears throat> I think a digital photo, of course. And then the things that maybe won't be required up front, I think are probably medicals, police certificates, and then biometrics, of course. So that's kind of um, a little overview, but I've, I've looked at this in depth. I've spent hours just thinking and pondering, and they haven't even released or opened the program yet, but I think it's going to be online. You know, it'll be interesting though, because it's not easy to just shift and create some online program, you know, quickly. They were working on this since last fall and uh, maybe their programmers have just been able to develop something. I don't know, but it's, it's really, really interesting to see. It'll be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Good questions, Nina. Okay, Jamie. Hey, I don't think I've seen you before, Jamie. Uh, does the new immigration pathway for essential workers require educational credentials? Ah, just answer that. Uh, Jamie, not, they don't care about your foreign work, your foreign education. All they care about is your education in Canada. So if you're here, Jamie, um, yeah, that's the reality. No, I don't, they, I don't think they have any need for educational credentials. Okay, Mustafa says, does my wife have to give IELTS if she's joining me? Is it mandatory or will it give any major boost to my profile? Mustafa, if your spouse is accompanying you, then 20 of your points will go to her. And if she doesn't write the IELTS, you're losing 20 points, essentially. Potentially, depending on your scores. But you could be losing 20 points. Um, so it's not mandatory. She doesn't have to. But your scores are going to be lower. If you don't need those points, then she doesn't have to do it. It's not mandatory. All right. Sunny says, hey, Mark, you look tired. And this is very early for a live chat. Kudos to your spirit. Sunny, I'll be honest. I'm exhausted. I am so tired. I actually just finished recording, like I said, uh, and, and Nina, um, I just finished doing a recording that Igor will probably post on Monday. That is my breakdown of the requirements for each of the programs. You know, you try to be as detailed as you can, but we just have very generic information. And I didn't want to go to the trouble of creating a very like super, super hyper specific instructions to people because we just don't know for certain. And there's a number of big questions like for international students, like on their postgrads, you know, after you complete your studies, it says you need to be employed. Well, is that for one day? Do you just get a job for one day and you're good enough? Like we just don't have answers to those things. All right. But yes, Sonny, I am feeling it. Okay, let's keep plowing ahead. Okay, who do we have next here? Simi says, I want to know about PCC fingerprints in Toronto for PCC applying for Bahrain. Simi, the lockdown is, is holding everyone back. So I understand in, 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 in Toronto that that's a real super tough thing to do when, when you're locked down. Um, obviously, if you can't get them, you have the ability to let IRCC know. All right. Uh, Sarab says, scores 483, knock 1311. Should I lodge my file under FSW? Any chance in PNP? I'm going to ring the bell, my friend, and tell you, get on over right here. Not there. Here. <laughs> and go to our website. You can see the courses up there. I like our website. And I'm going to have, a, a, it's interesting because I'm actually going to have a special page that's all devoted to the new PR program. I've already got in my mind this little, you know, table that I'm going to create to, to help people sort out, you know, whether or not they're eligible. But it's going to be all dedicated to the new program. But anyways, go over here, click on book a consult. And I've opened up a ton of consultations for people this week which really I should be getting my sleep because I opened it up to 7 a.m. So you can go in now and click on me and you can see that I have got a ton. Now, even, even, even though I've opened up, wow, those ones are full already on Monday. Well, they are. 
Well, anyways, Tuesday, you can see I've opened up a bunch of slots bright and early in the morning. <laughs> you can see I've opened, these traditionally weren't open. And so all of these spots I've opened up because I want to give people um, as much opportunity as possible. Obviously, Monday is going to be one full day for me. Oh my goodness, Monday is going to be so full. Even Tuesday is because only the open ones. Wow, Tuesday's going to be. <laughs> oh my goodness, I think I'm crazy. I'm a crazy person. I really am. What am I doing? I'm a crazy person. Here's the motivation, you guys. The motivation is that I don't want anyone to be screwed. I don't want anyone to have to go through the process to have the opportunity to participate in this once in a lifetime. And I'm actually going to backtrack here. Here's the policies. One more will take me here. Once in a lifetime, like literally candidates who before never would have had an opportunity, who would have been languishing here forever or on work permits or otherwise, you individuals, this will be your only shot. And I recognize that when you go to my site and you look, I'll show you. If you go to my website here, we try to be as transparent as we possibly can. Services approach team. My fees are right here. You click on these and you can see for our collaborative review model, which you work directly with me one-on-one -on -one, all the way through. And you also work through with the lawyers as well. The other lawyers in my firm, I charge $4,000 for that. And so you can see that process for some people, um, you know, this is a drop in the bucket. You know, this is your future. This is your life. And, and that's most, most lawyers probably charge a little bit more than that. And, and, and in all honesty, most consultants probably do as well. But, um, but the reality is it's a, it's a one-to-one. -one, you work directly with me, Mark Holthy. Uh, but there's lots of people that just simply can't afford it. And that's why, that's why I went out of my way to create this, these courses. That's why I created the express entry course and I only charge $347. That's US dollars because that's what the course is, is housed. But that's going to be similar to what I'm going to charge for people who want to go through and understand how to submit their application. And remember, guys, you're not going to see anything out there. This is like, like you can't rely on some Facebook group with experience, people going telling their experiences. No one has had any experience doing this. And this is what you need to understand. With this program, let me shift back here. This one right here, this is new. It's brand new. And so you simply can't trust anyone who doesn't know how to read the law, the act, the regulations, to understand and interpret the policy, and to have the background to fill in the gaps from a legal standpoint to know what will work and what won't work. And if you're relying on someone who's trying to give you guesswork, my goodness, you are just asking for disaster. You're asking for your opportunity to immigrate to be gone. That's why I'm creating the masterclass. The masterclass is designed for us to, to um, for me to share my 17 years of experience, to tell you when I'm wearing my immigration officer hat, what's going to work and what isn't, and, uh, and how to best protect yourself when you're filing your application from a rejection. And, uh, and you're just, there's going to be nothing out there because it's going to be created for the first time ever from scratch. And I don't think anyone has dared to do this, but I'm going to find a way to do it. I'm going to create the material. I'm going to create the video guides and the courses. And from there, it's going to be accompanied by one week, probably about two hours a day of intense masterclass to answer everybody's questions because there's going to be massive numbers of people in these courses. And, um, but it's going to be the one location where you can go to actually get your questions answered. Um, that's what I'm driving. Okay. That's where I'm going. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Sunny says any hypothesis on when ongoing outland PR applications will be processed, not allowed to enter Canada being more than 14 months. Yeah. I think I answered that one already, Sunny. You know, I don't think this may be at best the end of the year at best. They wouldn't have pushed this through if they thought they were going to be able to land all of you. Okay, so this one here, Binyam, just like I, I talked about, go over, click on the links below and book a consult and that's how you connect with me. Okay, Nidhi says, how one plus one year study work? Can student work between gap time of two program if first one have only two semester? Nidhi, is this you? That's asking the question, or are you asking on behalf of a client? So one plus one year study work. Um, 
there should not be an issue with you having uh, like a gap between those. The key is that you have two years complete, but there's nowhere does it say that you can't have a gap between those two um, programs if you're an international graduate. Now, the reality is in that interim, the question is, what were you doing? Um, were you like, did you, were you on visitor status? There's other issues that sometimes come up with that. Um, and then your postgrad that you're applying for, remember, you have to be employed. So there's a number of different things, but there's nothing that we've seen to this point to say that it isn't possible or it's not possible to have a little bit of a gap between the two one-year programs. But remember, one of them, all like the one has to be, nothing can be less than eight, eight months. Okay. Moving on here. Hmm. Any guess on why the Ontario PMP uh, in its last draw for the French speaking skilled worker took like, people with CRS scores between 456 and 460 and not higher? It's because they're guessing. So they're basically trying to pick out a cohort of people that they don't think otherwise is going to, well, that, that they think they, that the cohort that's higher is going to be drawn through um, the express entry stream. That's the only thing, that's the only reason why they, they pull at that level. And they don't always factor in very well what's happening with the draws, not like they should, because they don't know what immigration is going to do. And personally, I think they should have gone up to 467 because the lowest we've seen for outlanders is 468. But, you know, that, that I think personally that's their belief is that there's um, that the express entry will will capture those that are higher. And so they're picking out people that wouldn't otherwise get caught. But remember, Jim, after this, this, this <laughs> right here that we're looking at, where right here is <laughs> not that one. My goodness, I'm so tired. I can't even see my... <laughs> I think I'm going to have to shut this one down, guys. How long have we been going here? 42 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be wasted tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and I do have church starts at 11 a.m. And then I have a special meeting um, that I'm chairing with, um, with our elders quorum. It's the group of, of, um, of, of men priesthood holders that were we're meeting with the Relief Society, which is the, the women's organization, to talk about um, some things uh, that we're trying to, some initiatives in our in our ward or our congregation. And and, and those meetings are starting at 12.30. So if I, if I want to have any functioning, I should probably wrap this up, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but anyways, with these big draws like this, um, what's happening is that um, many of the PNPs are going to be gutted. They're just not going to have candidates. And so I think they're racing to try to get as many as they can. Um, you know, before Express Century, the, the 176 draw, or even what they're doing with the CECs now, at what we see, 417, PNPs are going to be scrambling to try to find candidates. Okay. Shoab says, hey, Mark, it is 4 a.m. in Montreal. Just woke up to eat for fasting. Uh, what will be possible procedure documents required for new stream? Um, like I said, when it comes to um, the procedure, I want you guys to stay tuned for Wednesday. So Wednesday morning, I have the live, all right? That live stream um, is open and we talk about everything. And then very shortly after that live stream is over, I go into my technical briefing with immigration. And then after that's over, then I'm probably going to uh, go live again and answer specific questions that have come from that meeting. So, and talk a little bit more about what my master class is gonna look like. There's gonna be a registration that's set up for people to, to leave their email addresses to be notified when the master class opens. Uh, but it's going to be, it's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, I think many will get their answer from this question. Okay, not quite sure that is. Uh, Vera, uh, Kisala, Portugal. Olá, como está, Vera? Um dia eu voltar ao Portugal. Já, oh, puxa, eu tenho tantas saudades de Portugal. Um, acho que dois anos atrás eu tive uh, algumas uh, discussões com a minha esposa. Nós desejávamos voltar e viver em Portugal por um ano. Eu podia fazer isso porque, uh, porque a minha prática a prática 
um, a virtual, a, a, a cloud-based in town. And now Percy's Ava Fikara King in Canada, but he mudar para todo lado. E nós falávamos muito sobre a possibilidade de mudar ao Portugal por um ano e e um, lá estar e voltar ao, ao país que nós chamamos tanto. Puxa, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you <laughs> in here. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. I'm giddy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off on that. Anyways, Vera, you understood what I was saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Wow. Oh, is that the sign to shut her down or what? I think it probably is. I'm I'm like this entertaining uh, comic here who is is functioning on virtually no sleep. Um, okay, let's see. We've got some big ones. You guys who have got questions that relate specifically to you, I'm just going to say I'm going to ring the bell and tell you to slide over here and and go to the site and uh, click on the link below. There's a link below that'll take you right here and book a consult. I'm happy to to talk specifically about whether or not you qualify or what the requirements are. Just let me know. Um, we don't know this express entry law person. I'm happy you're joining me from that group. We don't know uh, how they're going to be tracking these. Um, one of the questions we've asked them in advance is how many they think are out there. Like how many people do they actually think are in Canada? And uh, what is the mechanism for, for tracking it and updating it so people know? Okay, let's see here. Let's see if we've got some new ones. Um, okay, and people, like people celebration here, I'm just going to ring this bell. Same thing, go and book a consult and we can sort through your specific, uh, your specific questions. Um, Samson, in terms of your profile and not be receiving an ITA yet, um, there's not much I can do to help your human capital. Uh, and uh, yeah, this individual here, just go right over to our site right here and the links in the description below and you are, you're on Facebook, but you should still be able to see in the description. If you're having any problems, you can always slide, uh, just search up Holthy Law. So if you go right here, you can see it's, it's Holthy Law, first name law, remove the immigration.com and it'll take you right here. Okay. Love to connect with you and you can see there are appointments available. Okay, health-related jobs, Saima. That's not something that I do. I don't. I don't find uh, jobs for people. Um, let's see who else we have here. Yeah, this is something here, Subin. The answer is probably no, because you need to be in Canada, and so in order to qualify for the program, you have to be in Canada when you submit the application. If you can get here quick. If you can get here and it hasn't filled up, then there might be a possibility. Uh, Nide, I will also ring the bell for you. It's always challenging applying for a visitor visa when you are coming to attend a conference. Remember, the international conferences, by and large, are shut down in Canada. They're just not happening. They're all virtual because they don't allow uh, in in um, in person. Um, ha ha ha. Ada says, is there a format of LOE reference letter in your DIY course? Okay. <laughs> the short answer, Ada, is heck yeah. The course is freaking awesome. I wish I could tell more people how awesome it is. I have to rely on everyone else. When I go here, let me see. I can log in and I'll show you exactly what's in there. This, this course that you guys see here that you have access to for life, for life, this course has six modules plus a member resource section. You can see learning the basics, starting with your profile, completing your profile, your EAPR after you get your ITA, understanding the document checklist, and then mastering your documents. Module six is the bomb. It is so awesome. I've got a section for every single document. I have samples um, so that you can see to make sure that you've got the right one. So e-medicals, police certificates. The police certificates is growing all the time. If you look here in the sidebar, you can see all these countries, samples of police certificates for all these different countries. And thanks so much. If any of you have police certificates that you'd like to, to share with me, I redact the information and then I use it for um, 
just making the providing a good resource for people. But the question is records of employment. This is what I love the most. So in here, you'll see I have a tool for calculating hours. I have a record of employment checklist that I often give to my tell my clients to give to their employers, which makes sure that they have um, the right stuff in the reference letter. I have a section on what if I can't get a reference letter. I have sample reference letter templates. This is my favorite, the Knox selection tool. I don't know if I can pull it up. Let's see if I can pull it up here. I can't remember which screen that I've got going on here. Let's see if it opens up. Is it going to open up? Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you guys can see it. I'll just move it over here a little bit. This is my knock selection tool. I love this thing. Here's the instructions. And then basically, it's a table that helps you create something that's specific for the officer to show them exactly um, what your uh, documents, uh, your, why your knock code that you've chosen is correct. That's basically what it is. So you can see. And then, um, and then what do I have here for reference letters? <laughs> I have like 30, 30 sample reference letters from real people. And, uh, and then you asked about letters of explanation. That's my favorite part of all. Letters of explanation are like this secret magic formula for making your application from saving you from wreckage and destruction and helping you to create just the most user friendly experience that an officer could ever have because you do it exactly as an officer likes to see it. I have a section less than 54. Yep, there's actually more than 55. But letters of explanation, I actually use two different ones and I've got samples right in here, a document one and one that's used for EAPRs and tons of explanations and tips and strategies on doing it the way an officer actually wants you to do it. And so that is so head on over there click on the link and subscribe to the course it starts monday 5 p.m uh, mountain time and uh, it goes for two weeks the master class where it's me just like this answering questions but diving in a whole lot deeper than what we're doing right now all right so good question okay i think guys huh i think i need to shut her down now <laughs> thank you so much for watching everybody this was a lot of fun i've never done it at this time well, we'll see how many people actually watch it, um, but it was great to have all of you live. Your questions are what makes this so so interesting. As I scroll through here, I don't like. There's a lot of people that have asked questions, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to them. Many of you were patient and waiting, and sometimes that's kind of what it, you know how it plays out there. Um, yes, Jason, let's open the borders. Um, and yeah, all of you guys that that left messages, thank you so much. Uh, and once again, I'm really sorry that I wasn't able to uh, to connect in um, uh, with everybody. But remember, 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 and I think I can do, I wonder if this works. Does this one work? Oh, that just says me. That one doesn't work. I've got so many different overlays going on here. This is crazy. <laughs> the reality is book a consult, click the link below. Oh, I'm just hanging on here at the very, very end. I'm just hanging on there. <laughs> Oh, great. We've got someone from China. Thanks for watching, Dara. <laughs> You're welcome, Francis. You're very, very welcome. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, Nina, the course is going to be launched, and I know you're talking about the PR one. It, it's going to be launched, like, as soon as I am comfortable that I have enough information, uh, you know, after Wednesday, if I feel like I have a good idea of what the program is going to look like, because remember, it's not going to open until March the 6th, right? And so if I have the ability to open up early, you know, for the for the course, then then I may do it. But until we know for certain, Nina, um, you know, I can't create a course until I've actually had a chance to look at it. So, uh, but there's lots of tips and strategies, obviously, that we give right now for people to get ready, which is write your language test. All right, Dara says, get some sleep. Yes, I better get some sleep. <laughs> and yes, working hard, working hard. Good luck for you, Avnish. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Nina. You know, I, it's, I'm so far behind here. Um, oh, I fly through Morden and they accepted me. Oh, I'll give you one of those. Malak, I think you're the first person that, that I've heard that's gone through Morden. Morden's in Winnipeg, uh, sorry, in Manitoba. 
And we've got Jamie here. You bet, Jamie. And um, a good morning to you too, Sam. Hello, Mahesh. <laughs> Hi, Mohammed. Good to see you. All right, I'm just tailing off here. I'm trying to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. Um, Anya, I don't think so. Anya asks a very good question. This is one that would probably be the winner. This would probably be the winner if I was to choose questions and pull someone on live, but I'm not going to do that now. I booked IELTS for the end of June for new pathways. Do you think I'll be too late? I don't think so, Anya, because everybody is trying to book. Everybody is backlogged. So get everything else ready and be, so the moment you get those test results back, you can fire it off. Consider taking the master class that I'm going to offer so that you're fully prepared. You're very welcome, Simi. My pleasure. Mr. Smash, I love your name, so I'll give you a shout out. All right. And I know you guys have, are just posting tons of questions here. Um, wow. I didn't, I can't imagine. I couldn't imagine there were so many people here. <laughs> she Cash says, that was superb. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I love going to the end here. Uh, how is it going to affect the, 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 the impact on the provinces? It's gutting them, my friend. It's gutting them. Uh, OINP, EOI. We'll just have to see. Nide, there's your response. Um, okay, this person in the Express Entry Law says, for international student stream, must the job be only full-time? Are contracts allowed? Um, I believe that you probably could make a case for a contract. But remember, you have to be employed. And that's the key. And not be considered self-employed. And sometimes contracts like that, where they're piecemeal, Sure, you can cobble together a year and three years of contract work, but you don't want immigration to deem that that's self-employed work experience. <laughs> Mr. Smash, guess the FSW score. Yeah, I think it's going to be lower than, like it will be lower than 480 because you can only, like you have to be an astrophysicist with a PhD, 29 years old, three years work experience, and English, perfect English to get those high scores or French speaking, so... <laughs> James is from Goa, India. Cool. Aid is there. You're welcome, Vidya. Guys, stay tuned because on Monday, Igor's going to release the PR Pathways video that I just did that explains in as much detail as possible on Monday how you can determine whether or not you've qualified or not. Um, <laughs> Francis says, oh, yes, Francis, so good to see you. I'll give you a clap there. <laughs> Francis was also an, a, a past subscriber. You guys are awesome. God bless you too, Simi. Uh, um, can't able to book outs. I know, Gurjeet. Many people are in that situation. It's what we're bringing up with immigration um, on Wednesday. Um, you're very welcome, Mohammed. I'm trying to see if I can get to the bottom here. <laughs> Thanks, Vidya. I appreciate the shout out. <laughs> Francis, you're awesome. Best Immigration Lawyer Award. You know, actually, the funny thing is, my peers here in Canada were very kind to me. And there's this... Um, this source called Best Lawyers, and, uh, and I did win the Lawyer of the Year for 2021. So that was voted by my peers, other, other lawyers, other immigration lawyers, which really, really was special to me. You know, I love it when you guys are grateful, but when your peers, your own peers recognize what you do, and, uh, you know, that's when it really means something. Um, Ada says, I can't attend the masterclass. May I buy the DIY course? Of course you can, Ada. The, the, you, you'll have access to the master class every bit as much. Um, and, you, and you'll be able to watch everything as a recording as well. So when I go live and people ask questions, even though you can't attend live, everything is in a private Facebook group where you have access to it for life, just like the courses. So you can go back at your leisure and watch the videos. And I can tell you that when one people asks a question, usually 10 other people benefit from it. Okay. Um, Great, Ada, that's awesome that you got a notification of interest from Nova Scotia. That's step one, right? That's step one. And then the course can help you to, uh, to, to, to finish everything else off. Okay, Mr. Smash gives me a thumbs up. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, you're in Toronto at 440. You had too much coffee. Absolutely. You're very welcome, Christine. Um. Yes, looking forward to work. Hope to hear from you and Igor soon. Yes, Christine. Yes, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna connect in. Um, okay, I think <laughs> Nova Scotia is sleeping the way you will sleep in a couple of minutes. Oh my goodness, you're right. I'm at, 
when my pillow, when my, <laughs> when my pillow hits my head, when my head hits the pillow, I'm going to be out. Rupinder, I'm glad that I'm a, se a sense of comic relief, you guys. Here, let's make it snow too. We'll make it snow. And I wonder, oh, I've got one other thing maybe. I wonder if this will work. Oh, no, it doesn't work. I was going to, I was going to switch to my baby, but I don't have my baby face set up yet. You're very welcome, Christine. Um, yes, I'm very, very much looking forward to working with you as well. And James, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Ankit. Um, uh, Rupinder, last one, please. Your questions, my friend, I have to ring it. And when I have a big question like that, it's, I'll be honest, I'm not functioning at my peak performance. All right. Thank you, Ankit. And thank you, Vidya. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. YouTube gave me trouble because I was using this music right here. <laughs> I paid for it. Sometimes I don't understand what YouTube does. So I won't, I'll forego the music. But thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful uh, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel. Share it with everybody. I would love nothing more than to see this channel go to 100,000 people. Um, the consult link is below. And the course starts Monday. Monday at, on the 19th. All right. Take care, guys.